You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Yelp Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Yelp will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt show, John Kraft, who has been covering the financial services technology area of Wall Street uh, for D.A. Davidson since 2001. John's also been recognized by the Wall Street Journal as best on the street. John, real pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. Before we dig into sort of the depth of the questions, could you just describe what area of the market is most interesting for you? Well, as you mentioned, I'm focusing primarily on the technology uh, subsector that is in financial services. Oftentimes, vendors that cater specific to banks or banks uh, and or uh, companies that provide some sort of a, you know, a technology that can be used in financial services. Okay. So obviously, I have a little bias. <laughs> well, this is sort of a financial show, so maybe you'll, uh, you'll give us some good ideas. Um, actually, we're, just to be clear, we're not looking for any specific stock recommendations, and if we do discuss any, I think we're just discussing them again from the educational side and not that people have to subscribe to you directly at uh, Davidson if they want to get that information. So you're focusing on the financial um, technology in the financial services area. Things like the Internet and just overall communications have changed so much in the past 10 years. What sort of expectations might we see in the next 10 years? Well, you're right. Things have changed. And if you just take a look at, say, you know, consumer access, Internet banking or, or home access, think, you know, things have gone from uh, old-fashioned dial-up to you know, full Internet. And we've gone from ATMs to PCs to laptops, tablets, mobile. Um, and so uh, as, that, you know, as that evolves, obviously, um, you know, the technology vendors have been a big part of, of making, that, making that so. The, the hot item this year for Christmas is <laughs> mobile deposits, simply making a, uh, taking a picture with your smartphone of a paper check and having it deposited electronically. Yeah. Uh, that's very cool. Clearly, you know, clearly mobile access and functionality is the current focus and should keep these these vendors busy for a while. You know, people are always asking about the next big thing and while it is always a mystery, I, I can promise you there will be something. Okay, well I wait for that. Actually what's interesting about it is one of the the predictions that people had when the internet was really beginning to ramp up was if there's so much access to information, then what do clients really need their financial advisors for? In fact, when I, start, I started on Wall Street as a financial advisor about 20 years ago, and you know, people would have to call us to get a stock quote, and now they just literally get it on their cell phone. It, has it dramatically ch lowered the need for advice because people have access, or do you think that people really still do need their advisors? I don't think it's eliminated the need for advice at all. Certainly, there is more self-service uh, functionality. Uh, consumers, though, seem to be more educated. Uh, they're able to price shop. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, while they're more educated, they still, I think, typically will need to have at least some human contact. And you know, from an investing perspective, there's no software that can recommend a stock for you like your own advisor. Mm -hmm. right, it's really getting to know who you are. So let's focus then more on some of the advantages of the new technology, especially, let's say, the check depositing systems, which I think are very cool. Uh, opening this up, of course, exposes us to so much more fraud. And even though we say, well, we're all safe and we've got all this encryption, the fact is the, the fraudsters are getting pretty smart as well. Is it, are we getting into a safer banking industry today, or is it, in fact, less safe? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think it's necessarily safer, although it was pretty easy for uh, a criminal to steal your mail and get a paper check in the old days. 
uh, these these uh, these fraudsters, as you call them, are very smart and always working uh, at at trying to uh, uh, stay one step or get one step ahead. But at the end of the day, from my perspective, it's a good thing for at least the vendors because this helps keep them uh, them employed. You, you know, there's uh, there's going to be a need, and it's going to be a, a, a tit for tat and an, an evolutionary process, but. Um, but I wouldn't say we're dramatically less safe or more safe. There's always there's always angles to to pursue if you're uh, if you're into the fraud. All right, all right. We're talking with analyst John Kraft, who's with D. A. Davidson. He was recognized by the Wall Street Journal as best on the street. He's gotten a five star rating from Starmine. He's quoted all over the all over the news, and of course he'll be best known for his interview on the Goldstein on Gelt show today. <laughs> John, uh, let me let me ask you about what makes a great analyst. You know, there are a lot of people who often say it doesn't help to be able to pick stocks because at the end of the day, individual stock pickers you know statistically underperform the index. But people who are involved in active management and really do the research, I, I like to think, understand that they're adding value to the equation. How do you explain that to clients? Oh boy, you know the the ongoing debate about active management versus passive. Um, certainly, uh, my value to our investors is to be able to keep a very close eye on a very narrow niche of, of technology uh, companies and, and a subset. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I think that it, it does help to be aware of the immediate competitors and what's happening in the market. Um, it, it gives you you know, one uh, advantage, and, and certainly it's not always something that's successful. But I think odds are, you know, the more information you can, then you can, uh, you can garner the the more ammo you've got, the better chance you have at at beating the market. So I like to think that that our specific narrow uh, expertise provides a value that that is uh, that is that's rare out there. Mm -hmm. So when you start to look at a company, when you pick one up on your radar scope, what are the first things that you look for? Well, uh, there's there's certainly a, um, a a list of things that that make the package, and and while no no stock or no company is perfect, um, I think you need to look at the the the, the messaging, um, the strategy, the the the. Um, the, the management team, and one of the things I like to look for is a bit of a history. So there's plenty of good pitches out there, but if you take a look back or follow a company for several years, you get a feel for for how management interacts with Wall Street, how they provide guidance, whether they uh, whether they tend to deliver on their promises, and you know that's another advantage for somebody who's got a narrow focus on the space. They can make a little bit more sense of of, of commentary out in the industry and, and know when uh, when you know, a bit of news that spooks the market and moves the stock down is is legitimate or just a buying opportunity. Um, and uh, you know those sites, types of things obviously give you know you some of that ammo and give you some of that advantage. So when you talk about history, you know, in our field we always tell clients past performance is no guarantee of future returns. But the history you're really referring to is how you see the quality of management, not how you see the stock price moving. Exactly. No, I think, uh, you know, oftentimes people look at charts to tell what the future is going to look like. That's not my approach. Uh, my approach is is more fundamental and company based and industry based and and really modeling product announcements and figuring out what that might look like in in a few years and you know relying on uh, on industry expertise to to help um, you know make some some overall bets and if you stack the the odds in your favor I think that helps but but you're right no I'm not looking at necessarily. Uh, the the fundament or the uh, the technicals in a stock to to choose what's going to do in the future. So you mentioned how some of the things you look at in a stock. How does a stock or a company even get on your radar scope in the first place? Well, the the subset that we follow, uh, and all of my peers have their own various subsets here at DA Davidson. Um, it, it, the, the subset has a whole universe of companies, and when I am looking for the next one to, to actually invest the time in, um, I, I have a few things that I look for. I look for 
the number of people covering the stock. Sometimes if you have 20 or 30 analysts, it's going to be really hard to really provide any value to your investors. Um, if nobody's covering it, there's, there's hidden gems out there and uh, underappreciated stories. So you know, that's one of the things that, that, that can be useful. Um, we at DA Davidson tend to focus more on uh, the smaller spectrum, smaller sized market caps spectrum, um, and that tends to, to, to lead to you know, a better ability to provide some differentiated view and, and you know, some, people, you know, some uh, appreciation for, I guess, our, our industry expertise. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I think the, the amount of attention and where it fits in the space and whether or not I think there's some, uh, some value that can be added to our research based on the existing companies that may or may not be you know, competitors or, uh, or potentially disruptive. So if you have a particular industry that you follow, which you do, do you find that when you put together portfolios or think of portfolios, you end up perhaps not being as diversified as you should be? Or the opposite, do you think that, you know, hold by the, the theory that it's okay to put all your eggs in one basket, just watch that basket very carefully? No, no. I, I, my subsector of financial technology is not diversified. Uh, not at all. In fact, um, when when... Our clients come to talk to me. They're they're looking at uh, a small subset of their portfolio that may be dedicated to technology or financial services, depending on how they categorize it. And within that uh, within that small subsector of their overall portfolio, they may have a couple couple names, a couple stocks that that are of interest on my list. And, and obviously, these portfolio manager clients of ours cover hundreds of companies and just can't get to the to the detail that we can um, and and appreciate that extra that extra industry expertise so these clients are in by themselves either with their own advisors or their own boards deciding on an asset allocation and a diversification and then they simply come to you for a specific expertise in a specific area which may only represent a few percent of their overall portfolio yeah, I think that's fair. I think people, um, I, I think at a high level, a lot of these portfolio managers or individuals are thinking, hopefully, that um, you know, in this particular subsector, say that they'd like to get some exposure now because the financial services broadly industry uh, is is recovering, and there's some banks that were struggling that that you know may have some pent up. Uh, um, project technology projects that need to be implemented, and how do we play that trend, and, and where do we where do we see the the the, the, the subsector and, and make some bets in in this sector? Yeah, exactly. All right, sounds great. We've been talking to John Kraft of DA Davidson, a considered a top analyst on Wall Street. John, we're just about out of time, but in the last few seconds, could you just tell us how can people follow your work? Well. My typical response is you need to talk to our sales force and get on our distribution list. Uh, and I think you know, pointing you to our website, uh, davidsoncompanies.com, is probably the best route to get that started. All right, and people can always find you because you're regularly quoted in the news. John Kraft, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to The Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.